Welcome to the Grim Leftover Show with Grimnir every Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern on reallibertymedia.com and rlmradio.xyz. Ah, uh, yeah, folks, it is a Monday once again here on Real Liberty Media Radio, RLM Radio. So uh, hopefully uh, you realize that today, today is the first day of fall, autumn, however you want to say it, here in 2019. Summer's over. Hope you, Hopefully you enjoyed your summer and you're ready for the fall. I like the fall. Fall's cool. You know, um, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a good time of year. I, I prefer fall to, to probably all the other seasons. Um, winter's nice. I, I don't mind winter. And I don't mind spring. Summer's, summer's like, eh, it's my least favorite. I don't like all the heat. But that's all right. It has to happen once a year for three months. <laughs> anyway, yes, this is the Grim Leftovers program. I am Grim Near, your host, and it is Monday, September 23rd, 2019. We're live on reallibertymedia.com and rlmradio.xyz and a bunch of other places. Freedoms Network, realliberty.org, tune in, shoutcast. Internet, radio, I don't know where all, all kinds of places. We're out there. Hopefully you are uh, found your favorite and tuned in from there. Also, you could be tuned in from the uh, uh, RLM Radio uh, Android app, because that's cool. That, that works great, too. Um, so, uh, yeah, maybe there's that. Uh, whatever you like, man. So, anyway, uh, yeah, we're doing those things a little bit different here this week. Uh, we are, are using... Uh, but to broadcast rather rather than rocket, and we are broadcasting only on the RLM radio stream, which goes to all those places I mentioned, rather than also broadcasting direct to Spreaker. I'll upload to Spreaker after the show is finished. It works. There's some there's some better features if you do an upload over there uh, rather rather than uh, broadcasting direct to there. You don't need to know the details. <laughs> anyway, hi and howdy to all the folks out there listening in all the various places. And if you are here in the uh, chat room on irc.freenode.net via the reallibertymedia.com page or rlmradio.xyz page, welcome. Welcome to you all here in the chat room. we got a nice group of folks here. We always have cool people here checking us out. And, and I see here talking with us this evening. Well, Javadar was talking, but he just left. Dan Kenny C has just joined us. Moose Girl is here. That damn Van Meter is with us. Uh, Mr. Vin E and Rob Works and uh, uh, Cowboy Tech and the Barman and, oh, heck, I don't know who else is uh, hanging out here. Frumpy, I think, is out there. Willison, probably Miss Kate, too. Uh, I, I don't know who's all checked in and, and saying hi and howdy, but... Uh, Hi and howdy to you all that I mentioned and others that may just be listening and have not chatted in the chat in the last several minutes. So, uh, good to have you here with us today, tonight, this evening. What else did I have to tell you? Oh yeah, on uh, Friday, right towards the end of uh, Vincent Easley's show, The Ponder Gander, the radio stream went off. And I thought it was just like a blurb, because sometimes uh, it happens on occasion that the uh, radio server will experience an issue and reboot itself. But this was something else, and it took several hours, uh, probably a good 12 hours, for that thing to get uh, re reset up and fixed. So due to that, there was no Freaker's Ball Friday night. Now, I could have still run a Freaker's Ball strictly on the video stream, but a lot of people that tune in to Freaker's Ball only tune in on the audio stream. And, and I didn't want to, you know, cut those people out uh, be, because, um, yeah, I, 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 uh, I, I just didn't want to. Or, or, and or, possibly, uh, it was a good excuse to take off a Friday night. <laughs> Which, <laughs> you know, sometimes it's nice to have a Friday night off, uh, but... Uh, it, it's pretty rare. It's pretty rare. Uh, we usually do a, a Freakers 
or balls to the wall regardless. Um, almost every single week, but every now and then I, I don't mind taking a, a Friday off. Uh, you know, when the mood strikes me, or I have a good excuse like I did on Friday. And that was pretty much just an excuse. <laughs> well, this Friday, it's going to be balls to the wall because Moose Girl is going to a show. It's the uh, Boats and Bluegrass show. Oh, all kinds of good bluegrass music. She'll be out there dancing up a storm, having a few beers with the people down there. Good old time. So uh, Moose Girl won't be here Friday, but I will. So uh, hopefully you'll tune in on Friday evening as well, 11 p.m. Eastern there on that. All right, I got a bunch of stories lined up, as I do here on this particular program, showgram, and uh, nothing too exciting, I don't think, but we'll see how I how I do as I get into them. So uh, hopefully you'll uh, tune in here and enjoy these. Uh, I mean, uh, stay tuned, I guess, and enjoy these. <laughs> Let me do a little now thing there in the jet so everybody knows. You never know. Sometimes people don't catch on right away. Sometimes people are a little bit, uh, you know, doing other things. Some people, Rob works is, sometimes Rob works is firing up a bubbler and passing it around. And that's always appreciated. <laughs> All right, we're starting off with an article here from August 9 uh, uh, on TechCrunch.com. Yeah. Robocall blocking apps caught sending your private data without your permission. Without your permission. Huh. It's supposed to block robocalls, which I guess it does. I don't know. I never tried one. I don't have one of those smartphone things uh, to try it. But apparently it's supposed to block robocalls so you don't get disturbed uh, you know, by certain people that are not really friends of yours calling you. Um, but it does so, in, in, in addition to doing that, it takes all your private information and sells it off. <laughs> Robocall blocking apps promise to rid your life of spoofed and spam phone calls. But are they trustworthy? One security researcher said many of these apps can violate your privacy as soon as they are opened. Dan Hastings, a senior security consultant at a cybersecurity firm, NCC Group, analyzed some of the most popular robocall blocking apps, including TrapCall, TrueCaller, and Haya, uh, and found egregious privacy violations. Robocalls are getting worse. I, I can attest to that. Uh, with some getting tens or dozens of calls per day. Those automated calls demand you pay the IRS. You, you know, I actually got one of those fake robocalls on my dumb cell phone today um, <laughs> from, from the fake IRS saying, we're going to sue you, or well, I forget exactly what their words were, but saying the IRS was going to sue me. Uh, whatever. Anyway, so, uh, so automated calls demand you pay the IRS a fine or, or you don't owe, or you don't owe or pretend to be a tech support. Oh, yeah, I've got those tech support calls too. Yeah, Microsoft. Oh, yeah, we're going to fix your computer for life. Anyway, they often try to trick you into picking up the phone by spoofing their number to look like a local caller. But as much as the cell networks are trying to cut down on spam, many are turning to third-party apps to filter out their incoming calls. But many of these apps, said Hastings, send user device data to third-party data analytics companies, often to monetize your information without your consent, instead of burying the details in their privacy policies. Uh, or instead burying, not instead of, instead burying the details in their privacy policies. One app, TrapCall, sent users' phone numbers to third-party analytics firm AppsFlyer without telling users, neither in the app nor in the privacy policy. He also found TrueCaller and Haya uploaded your device's data, the device type, model, software version, among other things, 
before you could accept their pol privacy policy. Those apps, said Hastings, violate Apple's guidelines on data use and sharing, which mandate that the app makers first obtain permission before using or sending data to third parties. Many of the other apps aren't much better. Several other apps that Hastings tested immediately sent some data to Facebook as soon as the app loaded. Without having a technical background, most end users are not able to evaluate what data is actually being collected and sent to third parties, said Hastings. Privacy policies are the only way that non-technical users can evaluate what data is collected about them and, while using that app. None of the companies acted on emails from Hastings warning about privacy issues. He said it was only after he contacted Apple that Trap Call later updated its privacy policy. But he reserved some criticism for Apple, noting that app privacy policies don't appear to be mentioned, as he discovered that uh, with TrueCaller and Haya. Privacy policies are great. Not really. Nobody follows them. Uh, privacy, privacy policies are great, but apps need to get better about abiding by them. Now, you would think Apple would have the resources to test these apps before allowing you to actually download them, before posting them up in their app store. I mean, app, Apple is huge. They're a monster. Uh, they, they should be able to verify that the apps that they are putting up there are in compliance with the policies that they put up on, on their site. However, whether it's one of these robocalling apps that's grabbing your data, which is just another part person grabbing it, Apple already grabs all your information anyway. And, and it's not just what kind of phone you got, what time you're on, and what calls you're blocking, but they also get your contact list. Some of them go further and get into your your really private data, your banking information or whatever. Uh, people put everything on their cell phones these days. I can't imagine walking around with that kind of information on a, on a portable device like that. But people do. And uh, so I, I, I'd i be a little more careful if I was you um, with any of these apps that so-called uh, privacy apps or, or data call or blocking apps or such things like that. But speaking of phones, cell phones, from Breitbart.com on August 27th, FCC investigates Apple and Samsung phones after testing finds too much radiation. So obviously they're going to allow you to be radiated at some level, but they went a little overboard. <laughs> Maybe a lot overboard. <laughs> the FCC is reportedly investigating Apple and Samsung smartphones after an independent test by Chicago Tribune found the phones to be emitting higher RF radiation levels than what is allowed by the FCC. Apple's iPhone 7, iPhone 8, Samsung's Galaxy, Galaxy S8, Galaxy S9, Galaxy J3 admit more radio frequency radiation than the FCC allows, according to it, uh, a test conducted by the RF Exposure Labs in California. Um, apparently, a Chicago Tribune paid for that that thing. Radio frequency radiation exposure from iPhone 7, one of the most popular smartphones ever sold, measured over the legal legal safety limit, and more than double what the Apple reported to the federal regulators from its own testing. So they lied. They they, they rigged their numbers. Um, the FCC is now investigating some of the phone models featured in the newspaper's investigation. FCC officials would not comment on the results from the independent test, and while they did say the test was not as thorough as what would be required for an official compliance report, the agency will still be conducting its own testing over the next few months. 
we take seriously, yeah, sure you do, any claim uh, from people that aren't paying us off. I mean, uh, on non-compliance with radio frequency exposure standards, and will be obtaining and testing the subject phones for compliance with FCC rules. Apple and Samsung disputed the test results, say, saying that they do, in fact, comply with FCC regulations. Hell, they paid the FCC to make to say whatever they got complies. Why isn't it complying? <laughs> Apple reportedly released a statement claiming that their t that the test results for the iPhone sevens were inaccurate due to the test setup not being uh, being in accordance with procedures necessary to assess the iPhone models. But don't worry about it. Just Trade in your old iPhone 7 and buy the new fangled one. That's really what they want. All iPhone models, including the iPhone 7, are fully certified by the FCC and in every other country where the iPhone is sold, said Apple. Um, I, I guess people like those iPhones. I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm not a fan. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not a fan of the Apples of cell phones. Or any of the smartphones, really. But um, if you like them, you know, I, I, like I said, some people do everything on them. They got every, they browse the web on there. They do their banking on there. They do all kinds of stuff on there. I, I've just, you know, I, I've never been a really big fan of Apple products. I'm sure they're just fine, but the the, the Apple Corporation, I, I don't trust them. So, tracking cell phones. Oh, yeah, tracking. <laughs> on UPI.com, uh, posted on August 20th, 2019. New Facebook tool lets users hide tracks from advertisers. Well, isn't that wonderful? You can hide your tracks from advertisers. You still can't hide your tracks from Facebook, but that's okay. They're doing you a big favor here. <laughs> Facebook launched a new tool Tuesday of the week of August 20th that allows users to clear out their browsing history for apps and websites away from the social network, which can be sold to advertisers. Facebook has long promised the Off Facebook Activity Tool, which is part of the company's newer efforts to safeguard privacy in light of recent scandals. Businesses, or, <coughs> businesses and organizations often share data about users' interactions on their websites, ad platforms, and other services. The new tool gives users a summary of their apps and sites and send personal data or that send personal data, and allows them to clear their information. You see it, you control it, Facebook said. Well, why why can't you just not record that information in the first place? Why is it being recorded? Why don't you set that up so that people never have to go in there and try and clear out information you should never have collected in the first place? <laughs> Facebook is launching the tool only in Ireland, South Korea and Spain, so screw you, America, to start. It says it, it says to make sure it's working reliably, reliably, or maybe because people in those places uh, aren't aren't really their big profit centers. <laughs> it will become available elsewhere in coming months. Well, 2030 is in the coming months. I mean, what does that mean? It can be really difficult for people to keep track of who has information about them and what it's used for, Facebook said. Uh, this is another way to give people more transparency and control on Facebook. I'll tell you the best way to uh, really manage your Facebook information and, and uh, stop advertisers from, from grabbing your information from Facebook. Don't use Facebook! <laughs> get the hell off of Facebook <laughs> you won't have to worry about this stuff 
Oh, man. And by the way, you do have to completely delete your account there on on Facebook, or they will continue to track you uh, after you've deleted your account and removed what you thought was all of your data. So uh, there you go. Um, yeah, so eventually, I guess, uh, you'll... you'll um, They'll, they'll roll out that application here in the U.S., but uh, until then, have fun being a Facebooker. And even after, even after then, after you do all that, have fun being a Facebooker. I, I suggest you don't, but that's me. Alrighty then, we go to the shtfplan.com. The shit hits the fanplan.com. When it hits the fan, don't say we didn't warn you. <laughs> All right, this is posted by Max Lavo, as I said, uh, August 26th. Silicon Valley is building a Chinese-style social credit system. Big Brother is watching you. Companies in the U.S. of A, and more specifically Silicon Valley, are building a social credit system for individuals. Uh, much like the social credit system in communist China, it controls, it, to, it uses to control its population. This authoritarian control is different in one way. It's being done by corporations as opposed to the government. As if the government was not a corporation, which is also being controlled by corporations. <laughs> Other corporations, yeah, yeah, it's a corporation. So uh, saying that it's being done by corporations rather than the government, eh, whatever, Mac. Um, anyway, make no mistake, though, the corporations building a social credit system in the U.S. are already another arm of the government. They are lobbying and using the money made to get certain politicians elected. This is, which is also kind of wrong, because they're not really elected so much as selected, but that's, 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 that's another topic for another day. This is a very definition of crony capitalism. If anyone thinks we live in a democracy or constitutional republic, they are either wholly uninformed brainwashed or willfully ignorant. Now, most people, I'm going to say, are probably the latter, willfully ignorant. Some are both willfully ignorant, at which leaves them uninformed, and some are brainwashed, which allows them to become uninformed and willfully ignorant at the same time. You could be all three. China's tyrannical social credit system is a technology-enabled, surveillance-based, nationwide program designed to nudge citizens toward behavior, or government-approved behavior, socially acceptable behavior. The ultimate goal is to allow the trustworthy, not me, not you, to roam everywhere under heaven, while making the hard, making it hard for the discredited, me, you, to take a single step, according to the Chinese government. According to Fast Company, China's social credit system has been characterized in one pithy tweet as authoritarianism gamified. It's already here in the U.S. Yeah, 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 yes, it is. While many Westerners are disturbed by what they read about China's social credit system, uh, they need to realize that they live under that uh, they live under a system that is similar. Such systems are not unique to China. In fact, a parallel system is developing in the U.S. in part as a result of Silicon Valley and the technology industry user policies, and by surveillance of social media activity. Just talked about that by private companies. Big tech is helping advance totalitarian control over the population by censoring information they deem goes against the government's agenda. Yes, they do. 
<laughs> For example, the New York State Department of Financial Services announced earlier this year that life insurance companies can base premiums on what they find on your social media posts. Life insurance based on your social media. Wow. The Instagram pic showing you teasing a grizzly bear at Yellowstone. Well, I hope you have the life insurance before you start that. With a martini in one hand and a bucket of cheese fries in the other and a cigarette in your mouth could cost you. Yeah, you're not going to make it out of the park alive. <laughs> I don't think you really need to worry about life insurance at that point. You either have it at that point or you're dead without it. <laughs> On the other hand, a Facebook post showing you doing yoga might save you money. As if yoga ever did anything good for anybody. Airbnb can describe your account. What? Can disable, not describe, disable your account for life for any reason it chooses. And it reserves the right to tell you the reason, not to tell you the reason. The company's canned message includes the assertion that this decision is irreversible and will affect any duplicated or future accounts. Please understand that we are not obligated to provide an explanation for the action taken against your account. The ban can be based on something the host privately tells Airbnb about something they have they believe that you did while staying at their property. Airbnb's competitors have similar practices. And that that's like a, a place to rent bed and breakfast, right? Is that a big thing? All right, anyway. <laughs> It's now easy to get banned by Uber, too. Whenever you get out of the car after an Uber ride, the app invites you to rate the driver. What many passengers don't know is that the driver also now gets to uh, gets an invitation to rate you, the, the user, the rider. Under a new policy announced in May, if your average average rating is significantly below average, Uber will ban you from their service. <laughs> Sorry, no Uber for you. The Uber Nazis have, have declined to serve you any soap. You can be banned on WhatsApp. What is WhatsApp? I don't know what that is. If too many users block you. You can also get banned for sending spam, threatening messages, trying to hack or reverse engineer the WhatsApp app, or using the service with an unauthorized app. What's 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 app? Well, I don't know what that is. Anyway, an increasing number of societal privileges related to transportation, accommodations, communications, and the rates you pay for those services, like insurance, are either controlled by technology companies or affected by how we use technology services, all while Silicon Valley's rules for being allowed to use their services are getting stricter. All of the companies participating in these type of behavioral controls want one thing, and it's the same thing the government wants. Power. Control. Over you. Now, I, I don't use any of those apps. Uh, not that maybe someday I might want to. I don't know. But what if, what if you don't have a social credit rating? I guess you're okay until you do something stupid or what they consider to be stupid anyway. I, I don't really know. Um, <laughs> but if you ever saw that t television show, uh, Black Mirror, I think it was in the first season. Uh, there was apparently sometime in the future. I forget the name of the episode. Doesn't really matter, but it was a, but it was basically a social credit system uh, where this woman, at some point, pissed off the wrong person, and that person slammed her on her social credit rating thing, and she went from being like a five point six to a four point nine, where apparently five was the cutoff amount, and she suddenly she couldn't get an airplane ticket, uh, she couldn't get a hotel room. It was all kinds of stuff she couldn't do uh, suddenly, and she had to figure out a way to, to get her social credit back up. But everything she did, trying to, to, to gain 
uh, another tenth of a point there was causing her more more problems, more grief, and her social credit kept on dropping down, 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 two, zero, negative. <laughs> and she basically had to wind up living off the grid at that point. Uh, so bear in mind, this is what they want. This is the kind of thing they have uh, it, that's kind of coming your way that they'd like for you. <laughs> Uh, so it's best to avoid engagement in that in that uh, in the social credit system. I would think maybe maybe avoiding the engagement in their system is a is a knock against you too. I don't know, but uh, whatever. I'm not gonna try and engage in it, and I'm not gonna try to avoid it because I don't care about it. Depending on your life, your lifestyle. The things you do, it may be important. I don't know how you, I don't know how you go about doing it without uh, bending down and kissing their ass. So that's the that's the weird thing. <laughs> All right. All right. This next thing I have for you, it's not an article. It's just a, it's just a, a piece of software, uh, and it's a browser. It's a web browser, but it does all kinds of other stuff too. Uh, it's it got advanced email set up. It's got news groups built in. Um, it's got IRC chat built in. It's got an HTML editing made simple, which the reason I downloaded this, uh, well, I, I'd been using a, a, another uh, application for doing certain things that I do for, for a long time, uh, and, and that was Blue Griffin. And I like Blue Griffin. It's okay. But I found that Sea Monkey, the application Sea Monkey, uh, does it does th that particular thing much better. I have not tried their IRC chat client, but it is built into Sea Monkey. I have not tried. Well, I have tried the web browser, but uh, it's okay. I mean, it's nothing great or bad or whatever. Um, I don't have access to uh, news groups at this point in time, at least not that I'm aware of. Um, it was a black a black mirror. Well, I I, I referred to the black mirror episode. Although it, this is real, it's it's real, Beetle. <laughs> anyway, so uh, just uh, you know, if you uh, might want to try something different, it's a Mozilla based uh, client, um, and and you you might want to check it out. You know, if you if you ever want to build some web pages, it's really uh, r r really simple to do in there. So it's got all these features built in. Maybe you want to check out their IRC client. I don't know. Um, anyway, it's fairly lightweight, um, and uh, and it, it's still it's freshly updated. You know, September fourth was their their most recent update. So um, they're, they're keeping it up to date. It's a good project. Uh, Blue Dolphin? No, no. Blue Griffin was the one uh, that I was talking about. Blue Griffin. Which is a kind of gooey, what you see is what you get uh, type of web interface builder, but it, it does some things I don't really like. Although it was simple and it's, it, but it moves your, my code around. I don't want it moving my code around. <laughs> sea Monkey doesn't do that. Sea Monkey just lets you edit, uh, uh, and and it leaves your code alone. Uh, it, it says, this is what, how you want it, that's how you want it. And Blue Griffin was not like that. Anyway, check out SeaMonkey. It's a nice browser overall, too. Um, and, and like I said, it's Mozilla, so you can use uh, uh, most of the plugins um, that, that you can um, with Firefox or, or Waterfox. Um, and, and it's got an email client built in, too. So it's quite handy. It's a quite handy little thing. But you said the reason I got it, the reason I wanted it, was specifically for for that uh, what you see is what you get HTML editor that that is part of it that comes with it so um, anyway whatever it's nice it's cool I like it <laughs> all right um, some of y'all out there I don't know who you are probably want to keep it quiet some of you don't keep it quiet some of you, some of you tell everybody about it about your stuff and, and I don't know if that's part of the one of the side effects that you tell everybody about everything you're doing or 
you know, maybe it's just your nature. But apparently, according to the website realpharmacy.com, I don't see a date on this article. It doesn't really matter, though. Because it's still true, whether it happened yesterday, last year, or ten years ago. Common prescriptions linked to increased dementia risk. So there you go. Take your um, take your meds, and once you don't know what the hell you're doing anymore because you lost your mind, take more meds. <laughs> We wish it wasn't the case, but unfortunately, memory loss is a hot topic. People have countless questions about brain disease, such as Alzheimer's and dementia. What really causes it? Will there ever be a cure? Are there any natural preventatives? How do my other medications that I'm taking affect my risk of problems? Yeah, those are all good questions. Who stole John Bolton? I, uh... Uh, many prescriptions have been linked to memory loss. We we <laughs> we hope to answer these questions and more below. So if your loved one is worried about or currently living with this problem, keep please reading. Please keep reading too. However, common is Alzheimer's disease. Most people associate Alzheimer's with memory loss. One of the first and most common symptoms of the disease on average, the progressive and currently irreversible brain disorder starts affecting people after 60 years of age. Did you hear that flash? This starts affecting people after 60 years of age. <laughs> By the way, happy birthday again. Uh, <laughs> however, there are many factors that contribute to an individual's experience such as their genes, their diet, their lifestyle, habits, and more. According to Alzheimer's.net, if, if you remember, there are 44 million people who have Alzheimer's or related dementia, approximately 5.7 million of whom are Americans. Health officials ex expect that number to rise to 16 million by 2050, and because it's the sixth leading cause of death in America, how does losing your memory cause you to die? I don't know. Uh, there's only one in the top ten that cannot be cured, prevented, or slowed, and it demands everyone's attention. Ten early warning signs of Alzheimer's. Memory loss. Uh, memory loss. Oh, I already read that. Must have forgot. Inability to plan things or solve problems. Difficulty completing simple tasks. You know, I know people that have been this way their whole life. Uh, anyway, getting confused about times, dates, and places. Inability to understand spatial relationships and visuals. New problems when it comes to speaking or writing. Forgetting where you put stuff and being unable to retrace steps. Increasingly poor judgment. Growing less and less social. Uncharacteristic changes in mood and personality. I can say, I've known people that w since they were kids, they've had every single one of those issues. <laughs> How about dementia? Not unlike Alzheimer's disease, the most common form of dementia, general dementia. Have you seen general dementia? I think he's hanging out with uh, Colonel Sanders. Anyway, uh, no, that that's Bernie. <laughs> All right. General dementia is also a progressive symptom that impairs your cognitive function. That is, your ability to think, reason, remember, and behave, quote, properly. <laughs> properly. Many of the symptoms actually overlap with those of Alzheimer's. Uh, growing by 10 million new cases per year, there are around 50 million people worldwide currently living with dementia. According to the WHO, that's a figure that we expect to hit 82 million by 2030 and 100, 152 million? Four? They, they don't give a time for that one. Maybe whoever was writing this article has a little dementia because they said they expect it to hit 82 million by 2030 
and 152 billion by there's no time listed there. All right. Although the, the numbers are alarming, there are numerous ways to decrease your risk of development of Alzheimer's disease or other forms of dementia, naturally and otherwise. But the possibility of keeping the number of dementia cases to a minimum seems unlikely when so many people are on medications that increase the likelihood of getting it. Common risk drugs like Benadryl link to increased dementia. Uh, that's an over-the-counter, isn't it? Uh, Benadryl, is that like an over-the-counter um, uh, allergy type thing? All right. Uh, in March 2015, researchers published a prospective cohort. Prospective cohort study? Is that right? All right. Uh, in JAMA, internal medicine, called Cumulative Use of Strong anti Cloenterogenics and incident dementia. Cloener anti cloenterogenics. All right. The University of Washington and Seattle Healthcare System, Group Health, conducted the long term study which tracked 3,434 men and women who were age 65 and up and had no dementia when the study began. The team accessed every participant's history of drug use for the previous decade, including both over-the-counter and prescription drugs. Over a seven-year timeline, they followed up with all the participants every two years, during which 797 per participants developed dementia, 637, 637 of whom developed Alzheimer's. As researchers looked back on what those 797 individuals took, anti Color neurogenic, <laughs> whatever, uh, drugs became the, the main suspect. The most common anti-colorogenics participants uh, used were trisolytic antidepressants, uh, first-generation antihistamines, and the bladder anti six. Who makes these words? Uh, compared with those who didn't take those drugs, People who did for as little as three years were 54% more likely to develop dementia. So what are the anticholinergenics? Usually these types of drugs are prescribed to treat problems including urinary incontinence, Parkinson's disease, and chronic obstructive pulmonary, pulmonary, pulmonary disorder, COPD. The ant the, those drugs... Main purpose is to block the actions and effects of acetylcholine, a neurotransmitter which causes muscles to contract, activates pain responses, and regulates endocrine and REM sleep. Oh, good band. Do you ever sleep to REM? Anyway. <laughs> it's just a natural fact of life. As we age, our body's ability to produce acetylcholine decreases since the brain actually contains many acetylcholine-producing cells. As Harvard editor Beverly Merles, Mers highlights, blocking its effect can deliver a double whammy to you old folk. If you want to keep your head clear and your brain functioning as highly as possible, steering clear of the anticholinergenic drugs seems ideal. However, it is important to recognize in the long-term study revealed only a small portion of drugs was interfering with cognitive function. All right, so experiencing memory loss, not necessarily Alzheimer's. There are reverse, reversible dementias that eh, not, not the best thing to have, uh, but you can treat and even overcome, uh, which would be delirium, depression, vitamin C, B12 deficiency, thyroid disease, alcoholism. I'm not going to mention any names there, Goober. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. <laughs> What's that? Oh, your, your RLM player not working? Well, uh, yeah, try that internet radio link. Yeah, there you go. All right, this is a link that... Uh, Circle, over there, 
uh, posted up, and I just thought it was funny. That there's a, it's not really any information. It's just kind of some charts and stuff uh, showing you. It's called Spurious Correlations. And apparently they've created a book out of the Spurious Correlations. And so these are just a few little examples of these. And it, it, it's got one thing versus another thing, and it shows you a chart that they track very closely here. U.S. spending on science, space, and technology correlates with suicides by hanging, strangulation, and suffocation. <laughs> yeah. The number of people who drown by falling into a pool correlates with films Nicolas Cage appeared in. Now, that one is almost believable because... These people may not have actually fallen into a pool. They just saw this Nicolas Cage film, realized worth, life wasn't worth living, and dove in and drowned themselves. You know, that, that's, a, that's a definite possibility. Uh, <laughs> okay, per capita cheese consumption correlates with number of people who died by becoming tangled in their bed sheets. Again, that could be something that could be real because, you know, I, I, cheese makes you fart, right? So if you're laying in bed and you start farting from eating a bunch of cheese and you try to get up real quick, you get tangled in your beds <laughs> and kill yourself. <laughs> uh, the divorce rate in Maine, divorce rate in Maine, the state of Maine, correlates with per capita consumption of margarine. Again, that's something that could be real because if somebody, you know, your wife, I'm just going to say your wife, makes dinner and she uses margarine to cook rather than butter, you're, you're, you're probably going to divorce her. Say, hey, I ain't eating that plastic-ass fake butter crap. I do believe it's not butter. <laughs> oh, the age of Miss America correlates with and this one I don't really get but and it doesn't really look like it correlates all that closely even on their on their correlation chart here murders by steam hot vapors and hot objects ah, ah, take it for what it's worth uh, total revenue generated by arcades correlates with computer science doctorates awarded in the U.S. That I can see. Programmers love computer games. It's, you know, this only goes up to 2009, but still, even the years 2000 through 2009, I think arcades were rolling off quite a lot, but uh, apparently not that much because they're still climbing here. Um <laughs> Worldwide non-commercial space launches correlates with sociology doctorates awarded. Huh? <laughs> I, I certainly don't get that. All right. Now, this, this is an interesting one. Eh, not so much. <laughs> per capita consumption of mozzarella cheese correlates with civil, civil engineering doctorates awarded. I don't know. <laughs> Civil engineers are out there eating up the mozzarella, eating pizza, I guess. <laughs> oh, this one is probably a, actually a direct correlation uh, th that I could see happening. People who drowned after falling out of a fishing boat correlates with the marriage rate in Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you're out there in Kentucky, you hook up with some fine young woman, and you say, hey, let's get married. But after a year or two of living with this Kentucky woman, <laughs> you might just jump your ass out of a boat with the anchor tied around your ankles. <laughs> anyway, it goes on. You can read more of these spurious correlations here. I, I think it's kind of humorous. <laughs> And Circle did, too. She She's the one that shared it, so. Um. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, God. <laughs> All right. Get a little sip here. Okay. <sighs> New York Post, August 26th. Florida. <laughs> I could just probably say Florida and stop there, but you want the story, don't you? Man busted with a stash of Trump, Trump-shaped ecstasy pills. Trump-shaped ecstasy pills. I, I mean, you're going to send people on a bad trip. What the hell? <laughs> a Florida man who was found to have ecstasy pills shaped like U.S. President Donald Trump's head has been charged with unlawful possession of controlled substances, according to Pinellas County Court documents. Brendan Dolan King, 23, was charged in Clearwater, Florida, after police searched his apartment in June and discovered fentanyl and five orange pills shaped like Trump's head, <laughs> which were later found to have uh, contained the hallucinogen MDMA, MD, M, what? MDMA is a hallucinogen? I did not know that. Or ecstasy. Ecstasy. MDMA, ecstasy is hallucinogenic? I, I, I was unaware of that. All right. The confiscation re resembles one in Indiana in 2018 when the Lafayette Journal and Courier reported that police patrolling an interstate highway seized an orange tablet in the shape of the 45th U.S. president's head with his lips puckered on the front and great again printed on the back. <laughs> as many as 5,000 such pills were seized in Germany in 2017. Yeah, I'll tell you what. I, I don't care if it's a Flintstone vitamin or an ecstasy tab or, or even LSD. If it's got Trump's head... I'm not, I, I, it's, no, 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 no. It's not, I'm not touching that stuff. No Trump head drugs for me. <laughs> All right. Some of y'all out there, and I don't exclude myself on this, but some of y'all out there are uh, fans of astrology. You know, maybe you get up in the morning, well, I don't, I don't know if people read the paper anymore. Does anybody still read the newspaper? Anyway, uh, maybe back in the day, you'd get up in the morning and read the paper there while you're having your coffee or your breakfast or whatever, and, and, and eventually you'd flip into the horoscope section and read your daily horoscope. Or maybe you go to a website every day and check out what your horoscope is. Or you just do it randomly, whenever. But, but you, you know, you understand that astrology is, has some possible good information. And it can also help you find a mate. It can get you hooked up with the right person and help you prevent hooking up with the wrong person. Well, according to SputnikNews.com posted on August 28th here, porn site pairs viewers with X-rated actors deemed their astrological matches. So, you know, if you want to rub one out <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you want to do it to certain X-rated actors because they're your astrological match. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> a porn website has developed a special tool, special tool, that will help improve the quality of the content you're searching for based on your zodiac sign. And here's how. <laughs> for all those who believe that the fault is in the stars, an X-rated website, YouPorn, has added a new feature that weeds out porn searches by horoscope. The so-called astrology wheel, developed together with some person's name I can't pronounce, a West African and French astrologer, allows users to match the porn stars based upon your zodiac sign and brings up results of actors they are most compatible with. 
Now, I got to ask, really, do you care? There's a naked woman up there on the screen doing something or just sitting there looking naked. Do you really care if she's a Gemini or a Leo? Does that make a difference to you? <laughs> oh, being aware of your sexual partner's birth chart. They're a porn star. They're not your sexual partner. Being aware of your sexual partner's birth chart and zodiac sign placement can help you better understand the, the way their personality works. Do you really care about their personality? They're a porn star. They're not... Anyway, in and out of the bedroom, it adds a new layer to sex, helping you to get each other's kinks, turn-ons, and turn-offs. Being able to search for adult content by Zodiac Sign will make the viewing experience more personally tailored and enjoyable. Viewers can envision, imagine, what it would be like to have sex with someone with whom they feel astrologically compatible. You know... They're going to imagine what it's like to have sex with that person regardless of their sign. <laughs> For instance, Aquarius viewers are likely to find their perfect porn star astrological matches in fire and air signs such as Sagittarius and Gemini, while Pisces pair well with fellow water signs such as Cancer and Scorpio. The feature uh, comes in alongside YouPorn's astrology platform, which kicked off last year, allowing users to find uh, out how their monthly horoscope will affect their bedroom activity. So that's right. Get your uh, astrologically compatible porn star before you start your activity. <laughs> All right. All right. And lastly, and maybe leastly too, I don't know. I, I don't really buy this, but this is what they're saying on the NewScientist.com website here. By Jupiter? How the solar system's giant made Earth ripe for life. An audacious mission circling Jupiter's poles is probing the planet, probing, we already finished with the porn one. Anyway, uh, poles and probing, anyway. <laughs> uh, uh, circling Jupiter's poles is probing the planet's deepest mysteries, including how it's shaped our solar system and paved the way for our existence. Uh, near its equator, a storm larger than all of Earth's rages, l larger than all of Earth rages, there's supposed to be a comma there. You should put a comma there. Anyway, the, the smallest hurricanes surrounding it are themselves planet-sized. Uh, drive into them and you will be bombarded with water, foul-smelling ammonia, and lower, lower down frigid liquid hydrogen. Descend even further towards this planet's center and you may never find it. And that isn't just because you'll be dead, which just kind of slows you down a bit. If the heat doesn't get to you, the crushing pressure will, but also because the definite core might not exist at all. <laughs> no gooberzilla, no sex spots, but you can get your astrological compatibility match there on, on you porn. Is that what it's called? Something like that. <laughs> that dementia is really getting to me. All right. <laughs> so. The weird world, weird world of Jupiter, the biggest and perhaps most important planet in the solar system, its movements are governed by how the planetary neighborhood formed, or governed, governed how, not by, governed how the neighbor, neighborhood formed. It might even ultimately be responsible for life on Earth. Might be, as opposed to what your heading says that it, you, that it did. So, anyway, like I said, that's, that's why I kind of, eh, whatever. Uh, anyway, it's a partial article unless you, oops, unless you have a an uh, account with New Scientist, which is costs you money, like two bucks a week or something like that. So, uh, Jupiter. I like Jupiter. Jupiter's a fine planet. I like Saturn better. 
But, you know, I'm I'm not prejudiced against Jupiter or nothing. <laughs> All right, folks, that's going to wrap it up for me here today on episode 40. Episode 40? Yeah, baby! Uh, I'll be back next week with episode 41 of the Grim Leftovers show. Um, I don't know who we got tomorrow or Wednesday, but on Thursday night we definitely uh, have uh, have a... Uh, Poopster and Prince on the Power Hour. Uh, Vinny will be on Friday afternoon at 1 p.m. Eastern with a Ponder Gander. I myself will be on Friday night without the Moose Girl doing a Balls to the Wall program. And uh, check the schedule over there at Real Liberty Media. If you want to do a show, let me know, really, seriously. There's a form, contact form over there on reallibertymedia.com. And one of the things says, I would like to do a show on Real Liberty Media. Fill it out. It'll come to me. I'll contact you. We'll, we'll get you set up. That'll be great. So uh, that's it. Y'all have yourselves a great week and uh, enjoy the fall, right? It's fall. So cool. Peace.